Hey guys, Aaron here. You're watching my channel, Bob's Decline. Today we're going to be looking at what is inside a transformer. Alright guys, now before we take a look inside one of these things, I'm going to go over a few of the basic components of a transformer. That way you have a little better understanding of what you're looking at. So what you're looking at here is a basic distribution pole mounted transformer, where high voltage goes in and low voltage comes out. This can also be referred to as a step down transformer, as its intended purpose is to lower voltage. Now that being said, if during a power outage this thing is accidentally fed on the low voltage side from say, a generator that a customer does not have correctly installed, it will produce a deadly high voltage back out the top and into our lines causing an extreme hazard for not only a lineman, which may be working on that particular circuit, but also for the public as it will also energize any nearby downed power lines. There are many different types of transformers with many different purposes, such as voltage transformation, voltage regulation, or even current transformation. However, the components are all quite similar. Wherever voltage is present, there will be some type of insulator to isolate the voltage from the rest of the device. The remaining components will usually be bonded together at ground potential. But what about when the wires go inside the transformer? What does the inside of a transformer even look like? What's in there? The design is rather primitive actually. We start off with an iron core, then an insulated high voltage wire, comes in and wraps a few times around it, then goes back out and is attached to ground. This is not a dead short once voltage is applied due to an inductive resistance which magically appears in the coils and then becomes a naturally occurring load in the particular way in which wires are wrapped. If you want to know more about this, you can check out my video all about electrical theory, which I have not actually made yet. The same setup then occurs on the secondary side, where the electricity then exits the transformer as a lower voltage without ever actually touching the high voltage side, through a process called electromagnetic induction. Now I know that wasn't confusing at all, so here's an even more dimmed down version. All this activity inside the transformer causes the wires to heat up. The more load on the secondary side, the hotter they will get. A larger transformer will have bigger wires, thus being able to handle more load before it heats up. And this is generally how we determine a transformer's capacity. And yes, that does mean a transformer will better handle higher demand in frigid temperatures. Alright, now that we have a basic understanding of what's inside a transformer, let's open one up and have a look. So the first thing you notice is this thing looks like it's full of water. But what you're actually seeing is oil. But why does the transformer need oil? It doesn't have any moving parts or need any form of lubrication, like an engine, does it? Absolutely not. Like I said, these things are rather primitive. But what it does need is cooling. If this transformer was dry and had no oil in it, the steel can would act like an oven as the wires heat up inside. It would quickly result in a catastrophic failure. So what happens is the oil actually transfers the heat from the wiring inside to the outer edges of the can, at which point the heat can dissipate naturally by surrounding outer air. In fact, many transformer designs include fins like the radiator on your car to better help with this cooling process. What you're looking at here is actually a voltage regulator, which is a much more complex version of a transformer used to automatically change voltage according to demand, but uses many of the same principles as a transformer, including being filled with oil to help with cooling. Why use oil? Why not some sort of an antifreeze? Well, contrary to any water-based products, oil has an extremely high dielectric property, simply meaning it's a good insulator. As I'm sure you know, water and electricity do not mix. The oil in most transformers is actually a mineral oil, which has been refined over the years to be as efficient as possible for a transformer's particular needs. It is, however, still a petroleum product that does not biodegrade well and should be cleaned up in the event of any accidents or spills. Speaking of spills, you often hear people talk of transformers blowing up during storms. What's actually blowing up is nothing more than a fuse put in place to quickly shut off the power and also prevent any damages to a transformer should there be a fault. Like anything else, this form of protection is not perfect. It doesn't happen very often, but a transformer can blow up. Now, there's a big difference between a transformer failing and one blowing up. Usually when a transformer has a catastrophic failure, it's a result of contaminated oil. It could be that water or moisture is getting into the oil. 
perhaps there's arcing inside that's chemically altering the insulating properties of the oil by creating carbon deposits. In order to prevent this from happening, many companies have a program in place in which we regularly remove oil from our equipment in order to test it for any reduction in its flash point, water content, or dielectric dissipation. It's kind of like doing a blood test on a transformer. One of the responsibilities for lemon I bet you didn't know about. Another precaution which most utilities participate in is using vegetable oil in any equipment which may be near any waterways or geographic locations which may have more of an impact on our environment. Should one of these rare catastrophic failures occur, the vegetable oil, which is becoming more and more widely used, is 100% biodegradable. Not all transformers have oil in them. Did you know that that little black box you're using to charge your laptop is actually a transformer? It's taking 120 volts and transforming it to, say, 12 volts. In fact, I bet your house is full of transformers. These are all known as dry type transformers. They don't work nearly as hard as a transformer feeding an entire home, so they don't require oil to help them cool down. There are larger dry type transformers that are common in commercial and industrial buildings, but they aren't quite suitable for outdoor use. All right, everyone, we've only scratched the surface talking about what's inside a transformer today, but hopefully you get at least a little better understanding of them and even get to see the inside of one. Now, if you're a lineman watching this video, Make sure you don't mess up your ACBDs when reconfiguring the output of a transformer while preparing for a three-phase bank. And make sure you subscribe to my channel as we've got some real neat new product reviews I think you're going to love. Check it out.